In September 1848, a prominent pastoralist and politician, Mr Charles Calper, sent a message to the leading colonelists of New South Wales to attend a meeting at the gas company's office in Kent Street, Sydney. All interested parties who were anxious to improve the colony's rudimentary transport facilities had already met in Sydney on the 27th of January of the same year to study a privately commissioned survey for a line to the south. On the 10th of April 1849, by an Act of Parliament, the Sydney Railway Company was incorporated and in 1853 the Hunter River Railway Company emerged as the second private railway company in New South Wales. By the 3rd of September 1855, both of these companies passed into government ownership. The people of the colony of New South Wales now own their own railway and paid for its future advancements via the colony's tax system. This was the first publicly owned railway in the British Empire. It began on the 26th of September 1855 on a 22 and a half kilometre stretch of track from Sydney to Parramatta. In 1858 there was another Act of Parliament which involved the introduction of the Board of Commissioners with the Chief Commissioner in charge of the New South Wales Government Railway. Part of this Act mentioned that there was to be no political interference with the operation of the railway, but was to remain under the control of the Chief Commissioner who was answerable to the Government. The New South Wales Government Railway was never designed to be a profit-making form of transport. It is a public utility. The people's taxes and fares pay for its operation and freight haulage was the true form of financial return. The railway slowly expanded over the state and in 1977 it had some 742 locomotives of various classes, 2,220 carriages, 24,420 freight vehicles and covered some 15,209 kilometres. The railways in New South Wales have been responsible for opening up the country for the wealth and the benefit of the people and have continued to maintain that development for both passengers and freight services. The freight side of the railway in its latter years was known as Freight Corp and was sold on the 31st of January 2002 for some $350 million, half a billion dollars short of its true value. The following maps will demonstrate how the lines expanded and then retracted from the railway's inception in 1855 through to 2005. 